tarantulas. When we think of these incredible spiders, we usually picture the hairy giants of the American Southwest. But what if I told you that the East Coast of the United States has its own group of secretive tarantulas, bizarre hairless spiders that live deep underground? I'm Spencer Hoffman, and I'm investigating the secrets of the natural world. In my line of work, I often come across rumors and myths of insane and obscure creatures that science knows little about. Sometimes, those rumors turn out to be true, like with the unusual tarantulas of the East Coast. Just over a year ago, I made a startling discovery on my search for the purse web spider. No way. I have never actually seen one of these before. That is some kind of purse web spider. This small male was one of the secret tarantulas of the East Coast, which means the larger, more charismatic females must be in the surrounding woodland somewhere. So I'm heading out in search of a fearsome arachnid rarely seen by human eyes, a buried treasure of the forest. As summer comes to an end in North Carolina, and brutal temperatures release their grip, some of the most fascinating wildlife begins to emerge. Praying mantises reach adulthood and claim their throne as the apex insect hunters. These elegant predators can be seen roosting in patches of vegetation, patiently waiting for flying insects to zip by. After dark, large, beautiful moths are flying, as well as some of the woodland's more nightmarish creatures. But we're out looking for large, strange-looking spiders, and our tarantula is not the only giant arachnid that can be found this time of year. Check this out. You can barely see it. But right there, look at that fishing spider. This is one of my favorite types of spiders, the fishing spiders. And check her out next to my hand. It's not the biggest spider I've ever seen, but they're always impressive because they're just one of the bigger spiders out here in the Southeast US. Now this is the white banded fishing spider. This is one you don't see too often, especially at this size, because normally these live way up in trees. Even though it's in the same group as the other fishing spiders, which generally you find near water, this one is actually an arboreal spider. They're gonna be the tops of trees in these mixed forests, hunting katydids and a lot of different insects that live in the canopy of trees. What this one's doing this far down, I have no idea. Um, but it is always a treat to see a nice, pretty white banded fishing spider. They get their name because of that white banding all over their legs. And they come in a few different color morphs. This one actually looks a lot similar to a dark fishing spider. The only reason I can tell this is a white banded is one, it's on a tree. Two, those white bands are really bright. And that cephalothorax is humped where the eyes are at. That's a big tell for a white banded fishing spider as opposed to a lot of the other species out here, which have a bit more of a rounded head. These guys have that little humped area where the eyes all stick up. And my guess is that helps it look out over leaves and branches, gives it a little bit better of a vantage point when it's hunting for insects in the canopy of the forest. Wow, look at you. Put you back on your tree and see other kinds of spiders are out moving around. The trees are home to many of the gems of the forest and were my first clue towards finding the purse web spiders secret lairs. Take a look at this. I found this about a week ago. You can see I've been digging, but the roots and stuff were too, too dense to actually get to the bottom of the burrow. But there's a spider that lives right in here. This burrow is fresh and it's been rebuilt since I messed with it a week ago which means these spiders are here and they're active this time of year. So, so this is a young pine tree here that the web is actually built on. We have a lot of pines right in this area and a bunch more right out there. So I'm actually gonna be scouting around on these pines. It's assumed that these spiders have very specific microhabitats. We just don't know what they are. So, we are gonna operate off of the hypothesis that it's pine trees. I could be wrong, but we're gonna we're gonna operate off that hypothesis and see if I can't find any more. Otherwise, we'll have to go back to the drawing board and look deeper in the woods to see if we can find anything. No way. I recognize that fuzzy body anywhere. It's a it's a bold jumper, isn't it? Oh, it's a weird one. A regal? Oh, he jumped. Whoa, that's a weird looking jumper. What kind are you, buddy? But I'm gonna need a 
closer look at him. I have not seen a jumper this weird looking. Look at you. You are a special little jumping spider. Now I love the Phytopus genus because they're all super big and blocky and cute. But this is actually a spider I have not seen before. When I grabbed him, I thought it was a bold jumper, but maybe with weird patterning. And the regal jumper doesn't really range where I live. So what this one actually is, is the canopy jumping spider, which is a close relative of the regal jumping spider. And what's bizarre about that is I don't know what it's doing down here in this little clearing because as its name suggests, this is an arboreal jumping spider. They live in the canopies of trees, kind of like the white banded fishing spider we just got. This is not a common jumping spider. Definitely not something you're gonna be seeing every day. And that makes this an absolutely special find. Look at you, buddy. Now this is a male and I can tell because his front legs are super long. He'll use those to display for females up in the canopies of trees. And these spiders are extremely visual. You can tell because they have those huge, adorable eyes. That's why they're such popular pets. Because for spiders, they are extremely cute. But that helps them hunt and look for mates in their environments. Now, jumping spiders are extremely microhabitat specific. So generally speaking, you're not gonna see these spiders outside of their habitats. So my guess is a good gust of wind or something knocked him out of a tree, and he is looking for a way to get back up. This spider has gorgeous patterning, and on the abdomen there, he's got these little markings that almost look kind of like a little face with a mischievous grin staring right at you. Now, it might not look from this angle that this would give him that much camouflage, but when you compare him to the texture of bark, lots of lichens and stuff, that modeling makes him look like he's not a spider, and that's perfect for these spiders' hunting strategies. They're ambush hunters. They use those really good eyes to watch for prey, and as that prey gets closer to them, they'll jump out, grab it, envenomate it, and eat it. And trust me, these spiders are deadly accurate. They can jump over 15 times their body length, which means in close quarters, they can spring right on you and grab you if you're a little insect flying around in the spider's domain. You don't stand a chance. It's honestly kind of impressive watching these little creatures interact with their environments. They're almost like little tiny cats. And just like a cat, if you were smaller than the jumping spider, they would not hesitate to eat you. How about that? A little canopy jumping spider, absolutely beautiful, and a truly special find here at the end of summer. There were no more silk tubes to be found out here, but I wasn't ready to give up searching. I started searching along the creek, where the biodiversity is the highest. If there was gonna be another purse web, it was gonna be along here. Now have a look at this. This might not look like much, but it is something truly special. And if the spider that made this is home, there is a really cool encounter to be had. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna see if I can pull. Oh, I see there's two. The web actually splits. There's one side there and one side there. There's still, oh, there she is. Look at that. Look how insane that spider is. It's so strange looking, but that is a purse web spider. Now this is an unbelievably special spider and I'm gonna try and do my best to do it justice. There are two reasons I have it inside this container. Number one, like most mygalomorphs, they don't do too well with falls. You know, a lot of the other spiders that we've worked with today, they can survive little drops. These spiders are incredibly delicate. And believe it or not, I actually learned that the hard way. This is not the first purse web spider I've tried to dig up and uh, accidents do happen. So that, that was a very gut-wrenching lesson. I have accidentally killed one of these spiders trying to excavate a burrow. They're extremely soft-bodied and extremely delicate. But the other reason is watch this. Ooh, yeah, right there. Just like a lot of the Australian mygalomorphs, these guys are not friendly. Woo, look at those fangs. I've held the males before and they have a little bit better vision than the females, but the females do not have good vision. And any touch 
they can associate with a, an attempt at predation and they will defend themselves very, very passionately with those beautiful and very impressive fangs. I'm gonna go with the stick instead. Oh, oh, that is so insane to look at. You don't think of these guys living on the East Coast, but they absolutely do. They're, they're just incredibly secretive. And we know very little about the habits and habitats of these animals. I've only seen a small handful of their silk tubes. And all the silk tubes that I've seen have been within three meters of water. We don't know a whole lot about their microhabitats, but we do know they like to live close to water and they like to anchor that silk tube to something solid and sturdy. And the craziest thing about them, look at it attacking that stick, is while they are absolutely bizarre looking, even by spider standards, they are technically a form of tarantula. They are in the mygalomorph suborder of spiders, which are the primitive spiders. True spiders come in all different shapes and sizes. Generally speaking, if it doesn't look like a tarantula, aside from wolf spiders, which look like tarantulas, it's probably a true spider. But if it has that really humped cephalothorax, those shorter, knobblier legs, and that abdomen with those two little spinnerets in the back, those are good ways to visually identify that you're looking at a mygalomorph or a primitive spider. They are evolutionarily more ancient in their millions of years on the planet. And this is not a common species by any stretch of the means. If you live in the Southeast US, it is a very lucky encounter if you see one of these. And more likely you're gonna see that silk tube sticking up on a rock or a tree than you will actually see the spider. I'm not 100% sure on species for this individual. I know what genus it is, because there's only one genus of these animals that live out here, but there are a couple different species that are reported to range here. I've found the Atlantic purse web spider before. The males are easier to ID, but the females have that very drab coloration, and a lot of them look very similar, so it can be difficult to ID them unless you're looking at a male. But it is incredibly promising to see so many of these little burrows popping up this year. And it goes to show you that the time of year where summer's coming to an end and fall is starting to begin, that some of the weirder, stranger animals start to come out. I'm having fun playing with it because it's it attacks the stick. Absolutely love seeing true gems like this out in my literal backyard. I'm at home in central North Carolina. This is the creek that many of the videos you've watched have been filmed at and right here is where I found a gorgeous atypical tarantula. The family this belongs to is Atypidae, the atypical tarantulas. Ten years I've lived in North Carolina and I had never seen one of these spiders, not even any hints of their presence. As I watched the purse web spider disappear back into its environment, it left me with a sense of disbelief, like I had never really seen it at all. This video is proof to myself that these incredible and secretive creatures really are here, and after this journey, I'm excited to say that I think I'll be able to find and study them again in the future. As strange as this animal is, it's not the only bizarre creature I've tracked down in my backyard. For years, I've been working to find the fearsome Dobson fly in my patch of woods, and if you want to see that adventure, check it out right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.